This presentation is about the nature of consciousness, your consciousness, and specifically how your consciousness is utterly untouched by any kind of misery or worldly suffering. This presentation is based on the wisdom of the sages of ancient India as expressed in the teachings of Advaita Vedanta. How is it possible for your consciousness to be free from suffering? Loss, failure, pain, illness, all these are inevitable. We can minimize suffering in life, but we can't totally avoid it. Then what is the solution? The ancient rishis discovered that loss, failure, pain, and illness can't truly affect you. They can't even touch you. Why? Because they don't truly belong to you. How can that be? To explain, suppose you're returning to your car in a parking lot, and parked next to your car is another car that happens to be exactly the same color, make, and model as yours. From a distance, you can't tell which car is yours. As you get closer, you notice that one of the cars has been badly damaged. Someone carelessly smashed into the car and left. Seeing the damaged car, you start to worry, wondering if it's your car that was damaged or the other car. When you get close enough, you can see that your car is fine. It's the other car that's damaged, and you feel a great sense of relief. Now, consider this. The damage exists, and you see the damage, you experience it, but it doesn't affect you at all because the damage doesn't belong to you. Since the damage doesn't belong to you, there's no problem. Suppose this were true about all the problems of life, getting a headache, losing a job, misplacing your cell phone. Suppose these problems don't actually belong to you, and if they don't belong to you, they can't affect you. That's great, but how could this be possible? Hopefully, this presentation will answer that question. According to the teachings of Vedanta, you are a conscious being. The essence of who you are, then, is awareness or consciousness. You are the conscious observer of all that you see. You are the awareful witness of everything you experience. In Sanskrit, we use the word sakshi to describe your fundamental nature as a conscious observer or awareful witness. As a sakshi, observer, you are categorically separate and distinct from anything you observe. When you see a bunch of bananas, you are separate and distinct from the bananas. When you see a little puppy, you are separate and distinct from the puppy. And when you observe your own hand, as the sakshi, conscious observer, you are separate and distinct even from your hand. When you see your own body, it's known to you in the same way that the bananas or puppy are known to you. Your body is an object observed by you. Therefore, you are separate and distinct from your body because you are the awareful witness who observes it. Of course, your body is different from other things in the world because you feel sensations in your body, feelings like cold and heat, pressure and pain. Also, your eyes, ears, nose, and mouth pick up other sensations like colors, sounds, and smells, and tastes. All these sensations are conveyed to your brain. Because of your brain's vast network of neurons and synapses, you experience all these sensations in your mind. As sensations arise in your mind, you observe them. Each sensation is an object in your mind, a mental object, and you are the conscious observer who perceives them. As the Sakshi, you witness not only sensations, you witness your thoughts as well. Like your sensations, thoughts too are mental objects. As thoughts arise in your mind, they become known to you, the conscious observer, Sakshi. And 
In addition to sensations and thoughts, emotions also arise in your mind. When you feel happy or sad, these emotions arise as mental objects which are observed by you, just like your sensations and thoughts. As the Sakshi, you witness the constantly changing flow of sensations, thoughts, and emotions as they arise in your mind. To use a modern metaphor, it's as though there is a screen in your mind, like in a movie theater, and on that screen is projected your constantly changing flow of sensations, thoughts, and emotions. You are the conscious observer, Sakshi, who watches as sensations, thoughts, and emotions appear on the screen of your mind. And, as the conscious observer, you are separate and distinct from whatever you observe. Really speaking, your sensations, thoughts, and emotions belong to your mind, not to you, the conscious observer. And, if your sensations, thoughts, and emotions actually belong to your mind, not to you, then how can they affect you, the awareful witness, Sakshi? This is one of the most important discoveries of the ancient rishis. To make these teachings more clear, Suppose you're sitting comfortably in a theater to watch a movie. When a sad scene is projected on the screen, you feel sad. And when a happy scene is projected on the screen, you feel happy. This is what happens to you throughout each day as happy and sad experiences are projected on the screen of your mind. When I was a child, most theaters in this country had an intermission followed by a second movie. We called these double features. There's also a double feature projected on the screen of your mind. The first feature is everything that happens while you're awake. The second feature is your dreams. And your dreams can be really strange, like a science fiction movie. The first movie represents your waking state. Jagrat Avastha, when everything you experience throughout the day is projected on the screen of your mind. The second movie represents your dream state, Swapna Avastha, when all your dream experiences are projected on the screen of your mind. But what happens in deep sleep when there are no dreams? That state is called Sushupti Avastha. To understand the state of deep sleep, suppose the second feature has come to an end and you remain in the theater watching as the screen goes black. You find yourself in a perfectly dark theater looking at a perfectly black screen. This describes the experience of deep, dreamless sleep, sushupti avastha. In deep sleep, you are the awareful witness of the silence of your mind. You remain fully conscious, but there are no mental activities to be conscious of. Just like sitting in a dark theater, watching a black screen, in deep sleep, you are the conscious observer of a completely silent mind. You do not cease being a conscious observer during deep sleep. Your consciousness does not blink on and off like the light bulb in your refrigerator. Your consciousness reveals what is happening on the screen of your mind every single moment, whether you are awake, dreaming, or in deep sleep. That consciousness is you, the essence of who you are. It can't be an utterly mundane object like the light in your refrigerator. To better understand how you remain fully conscious in deep sleep, this illustration might be helpful. Imagine you are standing outside a room, looking in through the window. The room is brightly illumined by a lamp located on the side where you can't see it directly. The walls of the room are painted black, but you can clearly see the furnishings in the room. Now, Suppose we remove all the furnishings from the room, except for the lamp. Then, the room would still be filled with light from the lamp, 
but you would see only blackness. Even though the light is on, you see only blackness because there is nothing in the room to be seen. In this example, the room with black walls represents your mind, and its furnishings represent your sensations, your thoughts, and emotions. The light represents your consciousness. In deep sleep, sensations, thoughts, and emotions disappear, and your mind becomes totally silent. But even then, your mind continues to be bathed in consciousness. You remain present as the awareful observer, but there is nothing left in your mind to be observed, just like the empty room filled with light. Deep sleep is like gazing into pure darkness. In deep sleep, you observe the silence of your mind. Everything we have seen so far confirms what the ancient rishis taught, that your true nature as an awareful witness is Sat Chit Ananda. Sat means that which is real, that which is unborn, uncreated, and unchanging, that which remains even in deep sleep. Chit means conscious, being able to illumine your mind to reveal your senses, thoughts, and emotions. Ananda is best understood as being perfectly content and peaceful. But now we have to ask, how can you be perfectly content and peaceful when the screen of your mind is constantly cluttered with scenes of frustration and irritation, scenes of sadness and grief, scenes of hurt and resentment? You can remain perfectly content only if you are utterly unaffected by anything projected on the screen of your mind. As we saw before, you are separate and distinct from everything projected on the screen of your mind because you are the conscious observer of all that's projected. So, whatever is projected on the screen of your mind belongs to your mind, not to you, the conscious observer. Let's conclude by returning to our movie theater. Suppose you're watching a movie and come to a particularly heartbreaking scene. You'll probably feel sad. You might even cry. But you know that whatever happens in the movie doesn't really affect you. So, you enjoy the sad scene. You might even enjoy crying. Outside the theater, you also feel sad when sad experiences are projected on the screen of your mind. And just like in the theater, those sad experiences don't truly affect you, the awareful witness, Sakshi. As the conscious observer, you are completely separate from the screen of your mind and utterly unaffected by anything projected on it. It's interesting that so many people love sad movies. Someone might be in tears after watching a movie and say, that's the best movie I've seen in years. If you can enjoy a sad movie, then it must be possible to enjoy the sad scenes of life as well. Life is like a really, really long movie with lots of scenes, lots of happy scenes, and some difficult or unpleasant scenes as well. With the help of the teachings of Vedanta, we can learn that we are okay no matter what is projected on the screens of our minds so we can sit back, relax, and enjoy each scene as it unfolds in our lives.